unidentified flying objects. Are they proof that we are being visited by civilizations from other stars? Or just what are they? How big, Doc? 412 pounds of fighting fish. You're not talking about the Loch Ness Monster, are you? Marlin, pal, off the Kona Coast in 74. What do you think, Charles? Uh, grow at about 40 pounds a year? 74? That would, that would be what? A fish story. <laughs> Everybody all right? Yeah. Charles. Charles, you okay? What happened? What did we hit? What hit us, you mean? Breaker 19, Breaker 19. This is Fisherman here. Location, 30 miles south of Coachella on Highway 86. We need the assistance of Highway Patrol. Can anyone out there help Fisherman here? Over. Now, Roger, Fisherman. This is Hammer Down Charlie. I read you. I'm pulling off a truck stop now and will advise Smokey. You read, Fisherman. Over. Roger, Hammer Down Charlie. Five square. Thanks. Fisherman out. I really need a drink. <coughs> Will you look at this? We're stopped and the speedometer's on 100. The oil pressure's on the peg and the gas tank's empty.
lot of film. Get him another film cartridge, quick. They're gone, Eddie. Yeah, I sure hope so. The water in this thing's frozen. The fish is cooked. And in the freezer. We're sideways in the road. Hey, it looks like we've got reporters. Seven in the morning, huh? News travels fast. Okay, gentlemen. Did a UFO really hit your motor home? Any damage, injuries? We heard on the radio. All right, settle down, fella. First, nothing hit us, or we wouldn't be here now. Could I have your names and professions? I'm Dr. Griner, a surgeon, and this is Charles. Well, who's he? Why is he taking off? I don't know. Is this a new Air Force? No, sir. Are your own transport and driver? She's just a friend. Without her assistance, I would have kept you waiting. I see. The base commander's car and driver. That's not bad. Well, like the recruiters say, sir, it's a great way of life. Guys were in it. Do you have anything on him? Yes, sir. Edward Norwood's a stockbroker. Dr. Philip Griner's a top neurosurgeon on the West Coast. Charles Robinson's an investment counselor. Not exactly the types to perpetrate a hoax. No, sir. The doctor admitted he had a fair amount to drink. The driver Norwood was dead sober. Charles Robinson's a teetotaler. What kind of camera was Robinson using? Super 8, magazine load, zoom lens. I was afraid to ask. Lens cap left on. Film broke. Wrong kind of film for night shooting. <laughs> None of the above. No, sir. Captain, we just might have some authentic footage of a UFO at last. Might have. We haven't got the film as yet. I thought you were on top of that. I called Charles Robinson three times, but he's never available. He hasn't returned my calls. What should I do? I'm very sorry, Captain Ryan, but... My husband isn't available at the moment. Perhaps I could take a message. Is there somewhere I could reach him? I'd like to set up a definite appointment, Mrs. Robinson, any time at his convenience. Well, um, how long are you going to be in Los Angeles, Captain? Uh, yes. All right, I'll, I'll certainly give him the message. Goodbye.
sorry, darling, but I just can't come forward. After all this time, do you think it would really matter? Yes, I do. All right. I'll keep them at bay. Oh, the whole thing's ridiculous. These sightings always turn out to be freaks, practical jokes. But you have film. Yeah, Dad. If I thought a little quicker, I'd have left the lens cap on. When are we going to see the movie? I don't know. It hasn't even been processed yet. All the kids at school are bugging me. They know more about it than I do. Oh, school. Terry, are you packed? It's getting late. If you're not back by 9 o'clock, you'll be grounded next week. Who cares? I can talk about the UFO. And maybe if you stop talking about it, they let it drop. Everybody's talking about it. You're famous, Dad. But Terry, I don't wish to be famous. And so am I. Dean even asked if you'd come and talk to the whole school. No. Absolutely not. But why, Dad? Well, Terry, now never mind. Go get your things. In a minute, Mom. Sir? I don't want to talk about it, Terry. Now, look. The sooner it's forgotten, the less trouble we'll be in. Do you understand? No, sir. Maybe I will when I grow up. But right now, I don't. Be too bad if he had to be all grown up before he discovered his father really did love him. So you know I love him. I know you do. I've got 20 minutes between hospitals, gentlemen, if that's any use to you. We'll take it. The ball's in your court. Well, we'd like you to tell us what you saw that day in your own words, Doctor. You going to record this? With your permission, sir. All right, sure. But first, let me tell you something. The RV driver, Ed, was cold sober. And Charlie Robinson never drinks. And I saw what I saw. You got it? Got it. OK. We were coming back from a 10-day fishing trip in Cabo San Lucas. That fish was completely cooked in that freezer. Well, gentlemen, that's what I saw. Anyhow, what's the difference? You've got the film. What does it show? Is my story close? I can't say we don't have the film. Why not? We haven't even been able to reach Mr. Robinson. Are you implying that he's trying to avoid you? It seems that way. Would you know why, sir? He doesn't have any exclusive on this thing. If anybody does, I do. I saw it first. 
Will you put in a word, sir? A whole bunch of them. I'll call them on my car phone. Excuse me. Well, I don't care. I will not be interviewed. Sir, if I may ask, what use do you intend to make of the film? Use? Do you intend to sell it? What I do with the film, Sergeant, is entirely my own decision. Or is it? Perhaps the United States Air Force intends to seize it. Well, no government agency has any claim to your film. I wish I'd never taken it. I'd destroy it if I thought that would end the matter. All it would do is cause more mystery and more speculation. More publicity. But you know that, of course. What makes you say that? Because you would have destroyed it already. Gentlemen, I'll need your guarantee that I'll have no further connection with this business. There's no reason that you should, Mr. Robinson. My name won't even appear in your records. You have our word. I'll have the film delivered to you on one other condition. Which is? I want a print of it to show my son. Yes, sir, you got it. Good day, gentlemen. Goodbye. Thank you. Funny duck, huh? What do you figure? I figure that when a man who never drinks starts drinking, he's got a problem he can't handle. Like your father. Cool it. My dad saw the UFOs, okay? He shot off a whole roll of film just to prove it. What's it look like? I haven't seen it yet. How do you know it isn't a weather balloon or a kite? Because my dad saw it, that's how. Ready, sir. Quite impressive. Yeah. How many times have you looked at it? Ten. What's your opinion? Quite impressive. Would you care to edge out on the limb a bit? Yes, sir. I'd rule out major and minor mirages, weather and research balloons, and spherical aberrations on the film. What about aircraft? No, sir. Nothing of that sort could match the non-ballistic flight patterns. So what is left? Until we have further evidence, it's unidentified. Well, do you have anything else? Step over here, gentlemen. This is the sharpest, clearest frame of the object. From it, we made progressive magnifications. Is this as far as you can take it? No, sir. But after five times, we lose resolution and start magnifying lens faults. And of course, the limitations of the particular emulsion. Meaning graininess. Right here, we have something rather interesting. A rupture appears in the upper right quadrant of the object. Not an aberration? No, sir. In this blow-up, the disjunction is clearly defined. There's a separation. Right after a possible explosion. Yes, sir. Looks like something came off of the larger object. There's a piece of your UFO lying on the ground somewhere. You know what that terrain's like? It's desert. Could be within hundreds of square miles. If you'd like to take another look at the film, I can point out landmarks that could reduce the area considerably. Now, we're getting ready to go home. The rest of the footage is on the UFO.
Wow. I'm with you, Terry. Wow. I never got a good, clear look at it. Did anybody else? I did. I even saw a piece of it fall off. Oh, Terry, I don't think so. It did. I saw it. Didn't you? No, I'm afraid I can't say that I did, Terry. I know darn well a piece fell off. Just wait till I tell the kids at school. Can we run it again, Dad? Just the UFO part, not the fishing. Hmm. The thing was going so fast and changed direction so quick. Whoosh! My dad couldn't keep it in sight. But anybody could tell it wasn't a mirage or a bird or a plane. How about a weather balloon? No way. Even the Air Force guys said they didn't know what it was. Whoa, peaceful, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of peaceful. Well, we got a pretty good fix on it. Sort of. Yes, sir. You know, I got an itchy feeling. We're only working on half the problem. What's on the film? The other half being whatever it was shook up their motor home and fried the fish. Yes, sir. Well, the best possible piece of evidence there. Are you ready? Yes, sir. They threw out the fish. Spoiled. That's powerful, of course. That together with our mechanic's report on the RV. All normal. Bumper to bumper. Leaves us with this half the problem to work on. The film. <laughs> of some kind. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Maybe you can tell me who these people are. Bunch of fools with nothing better to do with their time. I see. What are they doing? Looking for a flying saucer supposed to have crashed out there last week. You're kidding. Nope. Where'd they hear that? Not from me. Do you know this country? Well, as the next man, I guess. I got a citrus grove not far from here. I'm, uh, I'm Ben Ryan. Moon's the name. Harry Fitz. Nice to make your acquaintance, gentlemen, but don't let me hold you up. Uh, we're in no hurry. From the looks of this truckload of tools, you're gonna hunt for flying saucers, too. Army. Air Force. Bomb disposal. Project Blue Book. Rascals. I figured you'd show up. Fools wasting their time out there. You too? No way. I got plenty of chores to keep me busy. You get thirsty, come on by. I sell fresh squeezed orange juice just down that road a piece. Well, Sergeant. I guess you better pass the word to your search party. The Air Force stands ready to verify and analyze any discoveries they make. Yes, sir. Own now. Hey, man, I found that. Gee, I thought you picked it. Basically, a gallon thermos jug, a couple rolls of friction tape, wrapped around a bunch of jelly glasses.
fellas as dry as you look? Dryer. Do any good out there? Well, we uh, cleaned up about a half ton of junk. Ought to be a law against polluting the desert like that. I could have told you all that foo-foo was a waste of time. I wish you had. Well, I told them other fellows, but they didn't pay no attention. Besides, I sold a couple of gallons of orange juice at a good price. Apparently, you don't believe in UFOs. Wouldn't say that. You got to believe what you see with your own eyes. When did you see a UFO? Last week. Saturday? If that was when those fellows in the motorhome saw it. Well, why didn't you tell anybody? Nobody asked me. All right, Mr. Moon. We're asking you now. I was out in the grove. In these parts, you get up early before the heat of the day. 4 a.m., still dark. I must have heard the wind machine start. Funny thing. It was about like it is now. Not a breath of wind. And that fan was turning. Oh, it's motorized, isn't it? Uh-huh. Only the motor was dismantled for oiling, and the parts were spread all over my workbench. Then it reversed itself. Maybe a minute. Seemed longer. Then it just whooshed away. Whooshed away? Where? Out of sight. Well, it could have crashed, I suppose. No. Nope. Just a piece of it. You saw part of the UFO fall off? That's what I said. Landed right out there in the desert. Not all that far from where we stand. How close can you fix it? Show you the exact spot, if you'd like. That's close. Bet you're wondering how I could drive out into the desert and find that thing right off. Same as those other goofballs out there. Had some help from old Pops. Old Pops? Old prospector, been stumbling around here, looking for gold for 50 years. Don't know as he ever found any. Spends most of his time wandering around in the desert, thinking, I suppose. Don't talk much, except to Betty Lou. His wife? No, his mule. Well, maybe we should talk to him if he saw it, too. A lot closer up than I did. He saw the fire had started in some dry weeds. Thing must have been awful hot. Mr. Moon, is that section of the UFO still out there? Of course not. As soon as it cooled off, I brought it in and put it in my garage. Well, why didn't you say so? I know. Nobody asked you. I'm not turning it over to you fellas, you know. I found it, and I figured it belongs to me. But if all you want is to have a look at it, well, follow after me. Follow after you. <laughs>
At the time of the original sighting of the UFO, a record was made on 16 millimeter movie stock. Is that the film? When do we see it? You'll have to take that out with the man who owns the film. We can't even talk to Robinson. In viewing the film, it was determined that a section of the unidentified object ripped loose and fell to the ground. As you know, that section has now been recovered. When can we see that? What's the Air Force calling this one, Captain? A weather balloon? Now, what is it? Tests are still being made, but I have here an interim report. It has been determined that the section of the UFO is not a meteorite or any other natural phenomenon. It is, in fact, a casting of functional design, though what its purpose is remains uncertain. The material is metal, very likely an alloy of exotic metals, and not a part of an existing aircraft. End of report. Okay, now we know what it isn't. How about an educated guess as to what it might be? I've given you the facts, gentlemen. You're free to make any speculations you care to. When can we see the thing? Obviously not until after the experts are finished with it. On the bookcase near the door, you'll find copies of the report and a blow-up of the landing site. You can pick them up on your way out. Captain. We had an agreement with Charles Robinson that there would be no publicity on him. His name was not to be used. I sent out a memo to that effect. That's how we got him to release his film. Ryan, the media people didn't get his name from me. They knew it before they came in. I don't know how they got it. Suppose you've seen the newspapers, Captain. I understand the wire services have picked it up and the story's appearing all over the country. I'm really sorry, sir, but the leak isn't in the Air Force. And where is it? I don't know. But if there's anything I can do... Uh, the damage has been done, Captain, and it's my family who'll suffer most. Dad? Uh, that's something you might well consider the next time you invade other people's privacy. Dad, please. Terry, I'm talking to Captain Ryan. But he's the wrong one. I mean, he isn't to blame. It was me. I told the guys at school about the peace breaking off the UFO. They all promised they wouldn't tell anybody. I guess they did. I'm sorry, Dad. Uh, Captain, uh, maybe you wouldn't mind helping me with the coffee? Of course. Dad, please don't look at me like that. I know you told me not to talk about it. And why did you do it? Well, it's just that I wanted to talk about you, that's all. Like the other kids talk about their fathers. Come here. They never see you. School, Little League, fishing trips. I never had anything to tell them before. Then you saw the UFO. Even took movies of it. You could be famous. I could be proud of you. But you wouldn't even come to school and show them. I wanted to do all those things with you, Terry. But I was always busy. Well, that wasn't the reason I... I kept out of sight because I'm not a celebrity. You are now. When someone is in my position, handling other people's money, a good reputation is essential. It's demanded. Well, if my clients had the slightest doubt about my honesty, they wouldn't remain my clients for a second. Yes, sir. But you didn't lie about the UFO, did you? No, no, of course not. Well, then... Twenty years ago, I cheated a client. I used his money wrongfully. I paid for my mistake. I went to prison for a year. I, I never wanted you to know. And I didn't want to be recognized. So, I kept out of the spotlight. I mean, any, any big functions, you know? School, public outings. The newspapers, most of all, so that no one could come forward and say, that's Charlie Robinson. He can't be trusted with your money. Who wants a business manager you can't trust? Don't you see? Excuse me, I have a lot of homework to catch up on, Dad.
Charles, how did he accept it? I don't know. He went to his room. Excuse me, Captain Ryan. You were referring to my sordid past, Captain. Since I owe you an apology, perhaps an explanation might help. It's not necessary, sir. You knew? You've known all along? Yes, sir. Since a background report came in on you last week. Something pretty interesting's turned up, Captain. We've stopped all tests until you have a look at it. Well, why is that? Could be we shouldn't even be messing with it. We're only mechanics. What is it? Markings. What kind of markings? Inscription, sir, they're stamped into the metal. We didn't see it at first because of the scorching and pitting as it traveled through space. The uh, heat didn't build up till it hit our atmosphere, but we were able to bring them up with acid tests. The best way to see is to take a rub. You probably did this when you were kids with coins. Can you decipher this? Yes, sir. It's a liquid oxygen tank bulkhead. It's part of the booster section from a Soviet satellite. It's been tracked by NORAD, but with 4,354 other objects in Earth's orbit. They predicted its decay, but it came down a week early. They confirmed the time, and it coincides with this sighting. I just wanted to tell you why we quit work on it, sir. We figured maybe there was some political angle involved. Is there? Well, that's out of my ballpark, sir. You'd think the Russians would claim it. It was offered to them by state, but Soviets refused to acknowledge ownership. Sergeant, we promised Terry a private showing of that object before we returned it to Mr. Moon. Absolutely. Right this way, Terry. Captain, about those things I said to you that night, I didn't get a chance to apologize. No, it's not necessary, sir. I knew where you were coming from. I just hope you don't get hurt. I'm not hiding anymore. I've got a son who's proud of me. That's a hard combination to beat, right? You bet it is. <laughs> expect you to deliver it personally. Oh, that's no problem. You tell us where you'd like it. Oh, Pops and me muscled it once. I guess we can do it again. Come on in and meet him. This is Pops. Hi, I'm Captain Ryan. This is Sergeant Fitz. He's a little hard of hearing. I'm Captain Ryan. This is Sergeant Fitz. How do you do, sir? Better than most. Pops is the one who saw the UFO been identified. Part of a Russian satellite. Yeah, I guess that's why the UFO is taking photographs of it. UFO? Photographing? That's right, son. Pops saw the whole thing. Right, Pops? I say you saw the whole thing, right? Right as rain. Seen it all. Well, go on. You saw a UFO photographing that? Yep. Spook Petaloo. You mew? Yep. Ain't seen her since. I was prospecting just to the side of Skull Valley. I seen this thing fall plumb out in the sky. Fell about a half mile from here. Well, I had nothing better to do, so I just walked out there.
Oh, wait a minute. Can't wait. I gotta go find my mule. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Two or three weeks, four weeks. You believe him? I don't know. I just don't know. Like some juice? No, thanks. Well, got some chores. See you, gents. <laughs>